Each year, June 1st marks the first day of the Atlantic hurricane season. A six month stretch of time when tropical cyclones are most likely to develop into tropical storms. Some of which can intensify and grow into one of the most dreaded natural phenomenons of North America, the violent and vicious hurricane. Today, these massive storm systems are categorized by a minimum sustained wind speed of 75 miles per hour, bringing with them heavy rains and a dreaded storm surge that causes bodies of water to swell beyond their current levels, resulting in the possibility of significant destruction and lethal conditions from flooding and wind. Residents of coastal cities and states across the southern and eastern parts of the United States are forced to keep a wary eye for such storms, relying on both local news and the National Hurricane Center to provide insight into not only the severity of a hurricane, but also the possible direction of its destructive path. With this information, communities are regularly forced to determine the necessity of evacuation from their homes and businesses. Yet for the residents of Pawleys Island, South Carolina, when hurricanes threaten, there's a much more legendary and supernatural indicator as to the outcome of such a storm. For over two centuries now, every time a severe hurricane has threatened the small South Carolina barrier island, a spirit known as the Gray Man has purportedly been seen. An apparition that locals consider an ominous warning of imminent destruction. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you are listening to Southern Gothic. The historic and picturesque Pawleys Island, South Carolina is located at the southern end of the Grand Strand, a beautiful 60-mile uninterrupted stretch of beaches on the eastern coast of North America. The island's abundant wildlife, both on land and sea, made it an ideal location for the native tribes of the Wakama and Winya, who once flourished here. The Wakama tribe were known to use the shells of the oysters they gathered from the island to decorate many of their amenities, evidence of which can still be found on the island today in the form of middens or oyster shell mounds. But the barrier island's name comes from some of the first Europeans to arrive in the early 1700s. Percival Pauley received land grants in 1711 to develop a plantation here, and many historians claim it was he and his family who were the island's namesake. Initially, there was some attempt to develop a relationship with what remained of native tribes by establishing shops and markets for trading and bartering. However, Peace, if there was any, was short-lived, and by 1720, the native inhabitants were gone. The island left to the European colonists, eventually becoming something of a summer refuge, with ocean breezes providing a respite from mosquitoes and the illnesses they carried. And now, centuries later, 
Pauley's Island still remains one of the oldest resort areas on the east coast of the United States. Yet no matter how modernized Pauley's Island has become, its natural ecological purpose is a barrier island to protect the mainland from vicious hurricanes and storms has made it the scene of numerous tragedies and tales of destruction over the centuries. Destruction that is said to have been preceded by the appearance of a translucent, cloaked figure named simply the Gray Man. Although the specific details surrounding the origins of the Gray Man differ slightly between each storyteller and each retelling, all offer some version of tragedy and romance, most contending that the ghost was first seen on Polly's Island in 1822. It's said that there was once a young man returning home after spending two years abroad but on the horizon, the young man was confronted with a large storm. Eager to arrive home and be reunited with his awaiting fiance, he hoped to outrun the destructive natural force, attempting to take a shortcut. However, in his haste, the man drove his horse and carriage straight into a pool of quicksand-like mud. The result, that nothing could be done. The man was trapped, and the more he fought, the faster he sank. His life eventually lost in the quicksand, unable to make it home to see the woman he loved. The young man's fiance was inconsolable in her grief and took to spending hours wandering up and down the beaches of Polly's Island. Legend says that one day, she spotted a shadowy figure walking towards her. And although the woman never caught a glimpse of the figure's face, she knew at once that it was her lost love returned. In one version of the story, the shadowy figure speaks to the girl, telling her, leave the island at once, you're in danger. Another version claims that after seeing the figure on the beach, she had a dream so vivid of her fiancé that her grief intensified. Whichever version of this tale might in fact be true, the outcome is still the same. The following day, the young woman and her parents left Polly's Island to return to their inland home left Polly's Island to return to their inland home, and unbeknownst to the family, a treacherous storm was on its way. The following evening, a devastating hurricane struck land, leaving countless deaths and massive destruction in its wake. But the young woman and her family were safe Yet eerily enough, their home on the island, unlike so many others, remained whole and untouched. If the legend is in fact true, then that first sighting of the gray man likely saved the young woman and her family from what is now known as the Carolina Hurricane of 1822. The storm made landfall in Charleston, South Carolina on September 27th. And in addition to significant property damage, its destruction resulted in the deaths of more than 300 people. Yet since this dreadful event in 1822, there have been countless other significant hurricane threats to Polly's Island and the Gray Man has purportedly been seen prior 
to each and every one. In 1893, two storms impacted South Carolina, now known as the Sea Islands Hurricane and the Charleston Hurricane. The Sea Islands Hurricane made landfall near Savannah, Georgia on August 27, 1893. It brought with it tidal surges that reached 16 feet, and at least 2,000 people were estimated to have lost their lives as a result of this storm but some claims place the number closer to three to 4,000 dead. Of all the destruction wrought by this massive disaster, it was the near total devastation of South Carolina's sea islands that gave the storm its name. One resident, Ann Weston Smoke of Magnolia Beach near Pauley's Island only managed to survive the storm by clinging to a tree outside her home. She held on for hours while the ocean roiled with such ferocity she believed she would be swept out to sea. And although the Sea Islands hurricane has been largely overshadowed in the collective memory of hurricanes by more recently named storms, it is still considered to be one of the deadliest in American history. The second storm of 1893 was the Charleston Hurricane, which made landfall that October in Georgetown County, the home of Pauley's Island. Although definitively less devastating than the earlier Sea Islands Hurricane, it still resulted in the deaths of 12 individuals. Many have speculated this destruction would have in fact been far more severe had not the earlier hurricane demolished everything in its path less than two months prior. But others believe it may have been the appearance of the gray man who helped minimize its impact. A report held at South Carolina's Georgetown County Museum today recounts the tale told by a local tenant farmer who claimed to have received a warning from the gray man while herding his animals. The man heeded the warning, and as a result, he and his family survived, as well as the farm upon which he worked. It was not until 1954 that the gray man was once again spotted, this time with the impending arrival of Hurricane Hazel. Hazel made landfall on October 15, 1954, near the border of North and South Carolina. When it struck land, it was a Category 4 hurricane, boasting winds between 130 and 156 miles per hour, as well as a 10 to 11 foot storm surge along the coastline. Hundreds of buildings were destroyed, including 40 homes specifically on Pauley's Island itself. Hazel caused one death in South Carolina, 95 total in the United States, and between 500 to 1,200 worldwide. And the severity of this storm system's destruction was so great that the name Hazel has been retired from use for North Atlantic hurricanes. And once again, a local woman reported seeing the gray man prior to the storm. She heeded his warning and left the island And when she returned after the storm had passed, not only was her house spared from destruction, but even the beach towels she had forgotten were still hanging from her balcony, 
where she left them. Hurricane Hugo brought the next sighting of the apparition in 1989. Hugo made landfall just north of Charleston as a Category 4 storm, its strongest winds reaching 160 miles per hour. Due to its moderate travel speed, it was this wind and the storm surge it brought that caused the most extensive damages. There were 35 confirmed deaths in South Carolina related to Hurricane Hugo. And to this day, it is still the strongest and costliest hurricane in the state's history, with damages estimated at $5.9 billion. The name Hugo, like Hazel, was also retired, never again used for a North Atlantic storm. It was after Hurricane Hugo that the story of the gray man and his warning garnered national attention. The television show Unsolved Mysteries featured a segment on the legend of the gray man, including an interview with residents of Pauly's Island, Jim and Clara Moore. The Moores spoke of an encounter with the apparition while walking along the beach just two days prior to Hugo's landfall and as the figure on the beach came closer to them, it disappeared. The couple put the sight out of their mind until the storm subsided, and just like those who had encountered the mysterious ghost before them, upon returning to their Polly's Island home, the Moors found that despite nearly every home in their neighborhood being destroyed, theirs was still standing exactly as they had left it. It is unknown exactly who the gray man is. And while the primary legend claims he was an unknown young man, several names have been brought forth as possibilities to his origin. One such identity is Percival Pauly, the island's original owner and namesake who died in the 1700s. Another suggested man was Plowden Charles Weston, an early resident who lived there from 1819 to 1864. However, the argument against both these individuals being the foretelling apparition is that these dates don't adequately line up to the accepted first appearance of the Gray Man in 1822. Descriptions of the Gray Man, as cited by locals, have also caused some to speculate that he might be Edward Teach, the infamous pirate Blackbeard. Many have purportedly described the apparition as wearing a long gray coat, quote, much like a pirate. However, it is possible that these descriptions of his garb could merely be a modern misinterpretation of 19th century clothing. As of this recording, the most recent sighting of the Gray Man was less than one year ago. Prior to the arrival of Hurricane Florence on September 14th, 2018. In the current age of cell phone cameras and social media, it is no surprise that the gray man may have actually been captured in a photograph, which has since gone viral on both local news outlets as well as the internet. Fortunately, for local residents familiar with the legend, most took this sighting as a necessary warning left. And despite making landfall as a weakened Category 1 storm, 
Florence still had enough power to uproot trees, cause extensive power outages, and bring significant flooding throughout the Carolinas. The storm stalled over the area, moving only two to three miles an hour, causing even more destruction. And tornadoes were seen, along with record-breaking rainfall, causing rivers to overflow and dams to fail. Nine lives were lost due to Hurricane Florence, and an estimated $1.2 billion of damage took place. The aftermath of which is still felt in these communities today. Modernization of technology and the improvements to meteorology, as well as the establishment of the National Hurricane Center in 1965, have all assisted in preventing the catastrophic loss of lives from hurricanes as seen in the past. However, as one Pauley's Island resident, Ryan Fontaine, told reporters, it was the gray man who gave true insight into what was to come. He's a friendly entity, not that it's a good thing to see him, but when someone does claim to see him, it gives us locals an idea of what we're dealing with. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you've been listening to Southern Gothic. Southern Gothic is an independently released podcast written and produced by Brandon and Brianne Schecksneider. For special access to members-only content, including access to the series Southern Gothic, The Monsters, as well as updates and links to our social media, visit southerngothicmedia.com today. Lucky Lady Shack.